So if you're wondering how the ocean race works, that's how it works up on my computer. Uh, get it on the screen. And bring things up. Move the game board around. Check your wind velocities. 11.9, 10.9, 11.9, 13 knots of breeze would be 68, 64 degrees on the bow, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I've got 9.8 knots of breeze. Uh, it's 103 degrees angle to my boat. So I'm on a, essentially a beam reach. A little broad or a baft of a beam reach. Finally, uh, I've been clawing my way offshore since last Sunday. Uh, only logged 400 and almost, uh, excuse me, 1,450 nautical miles. This is my track right here, the red line. I worked my way off here and I just decided I'm sailing the recommended route. Uh, which I have had success with before in these races. Uh, which basically the recommended route are based on the old ship sailing routes. Um, which is, you know, it's the intended route that to give you the most fair breeze of what there is most of the time. We've been underway since last Sunday, eight days now, coming up at two o'clock. Uh, and I've only logged 1,400 miles. My average speed up until, you know, a few hours ago was 7.3 knots since we left. Uh, and then you can see the less white lines you see representing the wind direction and speed you know that's light and variables eight that's an eight knot wind that we're looking at the little white lines are the direction and force okay we've got some systems down here down in the ice this red line here that's the ice line there's ice below that line. We don't have to worry about that this trip. But last leg we did. Last leg we sailed. From Cape Town. South Africa. Around here here, here, non-stop, here, here, round Cape Horn, up the South American coast, and into Itahai, okay, that took us so over 35 days or so, 30 days, 35 days, it was over a month, checking the boat three times a day, a couple times a day, you know, logged over, I logged over 15,000 miles, and, uh, I got to within 10 hours of the finish line right here. I got to about here when I went to bed the night before. When I got up the next morning, I was gonna be I was gonna be finished in 10 hours across 15,000 plus miles, 10 hours to go. And I got up the next morning to check my boat. Race closed. You did not cross the finish line. So, and there were still eight days to go before this leg was due to start. So I don't know why they closed the race eight days with still 25,000 gamers at sea. Because I was in, there was 48,000 people or 40,000 people in the race. I was in 17th or 18,000th place when I went to bed. So that means there's 25,000 people behind me still out there that they closed the race on with eight days to go before the next start. That didn't make any sense to me. 
I don't know why they did that. You know, I keep blaming it on my American flag. <laughs> you know. It's a French game, so I blame it on my American flag. <laughs> so, okay. And uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm finally on a beam reach. Um, not, not any big wins and not much expected. So now here we can take a look at what we think the wind is going to do. Here's an hour. This is forecast. So you watch the wind. Two hours, three hours, four hours, not much change. Five, six, nine hours 12 hours out 24 hours Ooh, it's going to get light again up in here so 24 hours i'm going to be up in here not much change looking at a maybe another knot of wind than i have right now 36 hours going to pick up a little 14 knots 48 hours going to be up here wind's going to have a little bit of south in it by then then we go to three days little breeze so and I should take up back in the in my intended route line here I'm sailing these arrows all the way to Rhode Island pretty much as close as I can so I'll re-intersect the route line I'm taking my beam reach right here while I can uh, and you know shortening my distance a little at least till I get to the equator which is right here and we'll cross the line in 48 probably 48 72 hours something like that three and a half four days something like that I'll be crossing hopefully yeah I'm just gonna ride it up and, ho and hope we finish in time you know with, with those, the most we can look out is seven days so here's four days Gonna have a little breeze. Five days. Okay, we'll be up around the. We'll probably just cross the equator, maybe in five days. From be up in here somewhere. So still only ten knots of breeze expected. Six days. Seven days. And. Uh, still you know some swirling northeast off the United States coast you know the southwesters southwesterly has not kicked in yet so uh, it's gonna be cool and it's gonna be slow so and that's as far as we can look so we'll go back to current wind and current position Yeah. Oops. And that's essentially the fleet. Um, I just elected to work my way offshore and take the intended route. So, while most of these vessels. We're working our way up the coast. I was working my way offshore east. I was afraid it was going to get northeasterly in here where it comes in off the land and have to work east anyway. So I elected to work my way east early and get to the Route course line um, as quickly as I could, which was slow going. See, there's still only four knots of wind down here, and it was on the nose like this almost all the way. I mean, I started to go up, and then I moved, and then I said, uh, and I just pinched her all the way east till I got on the on our route line and now I'm just going to stay as close as I can to that. I'm just going to sail it up and hope I finish in time.
what else can we do? But uh, virtual regatta ought to extend the race closures for the gamers as least as long as they do for the for the real boats. I mean, maybe they did. Maybe there's just so many gamers, but you know, uh, I you know I my boat had no wind for weeks on end in the in, you know in the middle of the ocean. I just kept getting in doldrums that I couldn't get out of. <laughs> so that's how that's how it works. Live. Cheers. I'm Captain Pete in the ocean race. Trying. <laughs>